Praise God, this is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Y'all have to excuse me this morning. I was trying to do a live, and as you all know, um, <laughs> they keep fighting it. That's all I can say. I mean, either the song, the sound will go off, or they'll just try to delete it. I don't know what's happening, but I do know. Let, let, let me keep it 100. And this is how you know, and I'm not trying to glorify myself. The anointing is powerful. When the anointing is present, so is the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, I feel the power of God. So, if I'm having warfare just to get up on Facebook to tell you what thus saith the Lord and to preach and teach his word, a question I now I got to oppose to all of you. Why is it that the others, and when I'm talking about others, the people, the famous, mm -hmm, the ones that be on here preaching, they never get cut off. They never have warfare. I'm not glorifying me. I'm trying to get you to question. Why are they having warfare? Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you with that one. Oh, yes, I'm going to leave you with that one. Good morning, everybody. I'm on one early because, you know, I, um, I've um i been moving. I haven't been on here. So, you know, I just had to hurry and get ready because this was so powerful. What God wanted to be said this morning, and I couldn't let it slip. So I didn't want to do it on the phone anymore because you know what they were doing. So we're going to go back to our subject, how demons enter. They must be invited in in order to operate. That's why they're always trying to find a way in. I'm talking about, and something happened with the computer just now, but so just try to stay with me. All right, so first I want to get into the scripture, Matthew 8. 28 to 34, Jesus cast out demons. When he came to the other side in the country of Gadians, Gerenians, two men were demon-possessed, met him as they were coming out of the tombs. They were so extremely violent that no one could pass by that way. And they cried out saying, what business do we have with each other, son of God? Notice they know who you are. Have you come here to torment us before the time? Notice what he said, before the time, because they know they're going to be tormented. Now there was a herd of many swine feeding at a distance from them. The demons began to entreat him, saying, If you're going to cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And they came out and went into the swine, and the whole herd rushed down the steep in a steep bank into the sea and perished in the waters. 33. The herdsmen ran away and went to the city and reported everything, including what had happened to the demonics. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they implored him to leave their region. They implored him to leave the region. What am I saying? We're living in an op 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 apostate church state. All right? The church is tainted. Period. End of story. They don't want the anointed ones because guess what? We see it and we cast it out. They have become so comfortable with demons. How is it that demons can search past the preacher, teacher, and not have a problem? That's because, let me tell you something. They can't dwell where it's holy. They can't dwell in the presence of God. But they can dwell in their own mm, and with their own. I just said something. Oh, come on, somebody. I just said something. So now I got to reiterate everything I said this morning. So basically what I'm saying is that you have to cover your gates. You have to watch your ear gates, your private parts, every place that have an opening. That's where the end end. That's why television is so powerful. We we're talking about music. That's why music is so powerful. If I start singing a song right now, you know, like how great are thou? You guys, I promise you, you will be singing it for two hours and you may not even like the song, but because it's a medium, media, notice social media, it's a mean of transporting and exporting come on somebody ascending and descending it's a transport it's traveling hallelujah it's spirits traveling to and from that's what's happening even i'm up on here the holy ghost is traveling into your spirit into your mind trying to discern hallelujah and give you some wisdom how to walk how to talk how to operate how to see these demons because they're looking for a way to enter in and hold on they're not trying to play patty cake with you they're trying to enter in to still kill and destroy the people of God. And that's why they come to the churches. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And, I, and I'm going to reiterate everything I was saying this morning. Now, y'all know God don't just give me um, the go ahead just to talk about people. And, and hold on. Let me make that clarification. 
I love every last one of you, even the ones that are not right, because guess what? That's who God is. God is a God of love. However, if you operate ungodly, if you operate out of order, I'm going to tell you, and guess what? You have the authority to tell me as well. No one is exempt. I say no one is exempt. Upon saying that, I got a video sent to me, Dr. Matthew Stevenson in Chicago. And people kept asking me, and, and you know, they, so they just sent me the video because I wouldn't answer them because I'm the type of person, unless God showed me, I'm not saying anything. Point blank. I'm not going to give you my opinion. You don't need my opinion. From what I saw, though, that's a seducing spirit that's in that church. I'm going to say it again. I don't care. Come for me. Hallelujah. I'm going to call it like it is. That's a seducing spirit. Don't send me that no more. Don't send me nothing like that no more because I, I don't want that spirit in my spirit. I just say something. You can get mad if you want because one thing about it I noticed when y'all like somebody, oh I like that. I don't care. You can like me. If I operate ungodly, then I operate ungodly. Period in the story. Therefore, I should be rebuked. I don't care who you are. Nobody's exempt. That's what's wrong with the church today. We, we, we liking and loving people to hell. The devil is a liar. Oh, hallelujah. I'm on one. And I look a little strange. I'm tired. I had to get presentable because you know I don't get on here early in the morning like this, but I couldn't let this message slip because it's not about Deanna. It never was. It's about the kingdom of God. And God is saying in this hour that demons are operating too much in all your lives, in our lives. They're trying to find a way in. And hold on. They're not going to come through strangers all the time because a stranger, you're not going to let get close to you. You better watch the ones that's already close to you. You better watch the ones that, oh, I, I just like you. I just want to come to your house. I just want to be a lover, a friend, a husband, and a wife. They will send them in the skies. And you have to have enough anointing in you to where you go to God and you say, God, show me their spirit. I don't care what comes out your mouth because the mouth lie all day long like a rug. I will show me their spirit, God. And did you send them and give me confirmation and don't move until you get confirmation because most of you are moving outside of confirmation. And now here's what happened. You get a soul tie. That's what I was talking about this morning. You get soul ties. That's why some of you are having sex with people. And I must reiterate everything I said this morning. You're wondering why you can't love your wife or you can't love your husband because soul ties. What is the tie? That means everybody that you slept with prior then because you didn't get cleansed because you didn't wait. Now you are um, comparing your wife to Joanne, Georgia, and Barbara. Well, Barbara didn't do it like this. Well, Joanne didn't do it like this. So now you out of order, husband. Because now you, you, you ain't cleansed and you still got the other soul ties, so you don't know how to treat your wife. Vice versa, hus wives. You sitting up there thinking about Robert, Richard, and Rohim. I didn't made up a name, Rohim. It don't matter. Comparing the two until you can't even honor your husband. Y'all sitting up there talking about each other, allowing other people to talk about each other. You are not supposed to let anybody talk about your husband and wife, whether they're right or wrong. That's supposed to be you and them and God. That's why God says a 3 4 cord cannot be easily broken. That's if he's in the middle. But if you got everybody else in the middle, money in the middle, uh, I just said something. That's why your marriage is, is where it's at. And then y'all want to operate ungodly and y'all want to talk about, y'all go to y'all friends and talk. That's supposed to be your best friend. Y'all supposed to communicate good, bad, and different. When you stood at the altar, all in front of justice of the peace, it was you too. Hallelujah. Quit putting people in your business. I don't I don't know who who God have that for, but that's for, that's for some of you on here. Stop doing that and you wonder why your marriage is falling. Look at you. Don't be looking at this and that because you give them the power. Hallelujah. That now y'all walking around both bitter and unhappy and, and misery. And misery loves company. Soul ties. What am I saying? Before you say I do, you need to be cleansed, purified, and make sure that person is ordained from God. Stop marrying people because they got a good credit score. Stop marrying people because the pastor says so. Stop marrying people because y'all families get along. Stop marrying people because they fine. Stop marrying people because of that boo or crap. Don't worry, I'm going to go because I say what I say. It's too much. And people are dying. And do you know who I feel sorry for? I'm on one this morning. You know who I feel sorry for? The children. Because then they, go, they got to go through that. And then hold on. Two to one, if they don't get healed and delivered, then they can go through the same process. It's called generational curses. You understand what I'm saying? Praise God, this stuff is real. 
I'm on one this morning. This stuff is real. Y'all know I don't get up on here at no 8.51. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a morning person. But this is not about me. God was like, Deanna, my people are dying. Because they're touching the unclean thing. They're touching the demons. They're letting demons enter in their mouth. Oh, oh, I'm going to go here. Some of y'all that like that Popeye sandwich, y'all think it's just about the sandwich. You don't know who prayed over that. You don't know what chemicals they got up in there. And, and y'all just allowing it to enter in. Y'all wonder why people are going crazy. That's demonic. Point blank. Anything that alters your thinking or your spirit is demonic. I'm going to say it again. Anything that alters your thinking and your spirit is demonic. Whoever or whatever. Hallelujah. This stuff is real up in here. This stuff is real. You got to watch it, God says, especially in this hour, because the Bible says even in the last hour that even the elect should be food. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So let me tell y'all what else I was saying. I am so happy. Prophetic class, you are, God has blessed you. Now, we always have warfare. Let me tell you something. Wherever God is, the devil is present. Y'all be wanting to just be with children of God. That's not reality. The Bible says that even when the beginning, they walk to and from and the devil will come and say, uh, hello. He's still doing that. It's going to be in your home. It's going to be in your workplace. It's going to be at your job. It's going to be everywhere at the gym. You're going to have to learn how to deal with these entities and these demons. Jesus did. I'll never understand why we have a church that don't want to deal with demons. Then that's all Jesus did, mostly the New Testament. He cast them out and he healed and delivered. That's what we should be about. But y'all want to throw conferences. Y'all want to have a good time. Y'all want to shake y'all booty in church. That's what that, that, that video was about. And it really hurt my spirit. So in a way, I, I understand I had to see it, but y'all don't see me stuff like that. I'm really upset about that because I, I like to watch what I, I don't want that that, that. that picture has been in my spirit. And notice what I said. And she sent that last night. Y'all understand what's happening here? You have to watch what goes in, who you listen to, what you do. But I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm not judging. Some of y'all like what you do. You like that. Just like that homosexual lifestyle. Oh, I'm going in this morning. You can get mad if you want. I love you. You're nasty. you just nasty. Period in the story. You weren't born that way. You're nasty. That's a nasty spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And you must be healed and delivered. It's a perverseness. And perverseness is a nastiness. Hallelujah. Anything that's outside of the order of God is called perverse. Point blank in the story. Anything. That you're doing that's outside of the will of God, outside the order of God, is perverseness. And it's a spirit. And it must be cast out. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody playing this morning. I'm not playing. So what I was saying is that um, the class, we have a lot of warfare. But what y'all don't see, and, and, and don't focus on just the warfare. Focus on the deliverance. Focus on the healing. Focus on what you've learned. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, because I, I had them to, as a matter of fact, this is what prompted this video. God told me to ask him a question, how demons enter? And it seems simple, huh? But you start writing a paper, it's going to get real good. Because God will challenge you, and God will allow me to challenge you. Because that's what it's about. It's about going higher and deeper in God, because none of us are perfect. perfect. We all fall short of the glory of God. But how far are you willing to go to get saved and stay saved? Oh, come on, somebody. Because many people, they'll say the sinner's prayer. They love God. But when you, it, but who you are is when you're by yourself. What you doing? You looking at porn? What you doing? Hallelujah. So some of them wrote some powerful papers. I will not read names because I, that's unethical. But I will read what they wrote because it was very powerful. And I'm very, I'm very proud. Y'all think I don't read them papers? Yes, I do. Now, I will say this too. No, I ain't going to say the second part. No, I am going to say it. When God gives you an assignment, go deeper. Some of y'all just wrote some, like, I'm here. Okay, you here. What you put into anything is what you get out of it. Point blank in the store. If you don't put nothing in, you ain't getting nothing out. Hallelujah. So let me read this. She said, demons enter by agreeing with what you hear in the spirit. You hear a suggestion, then you agree. You start opening the door to more influence. That is why you need to rebuke them. For example, one day I was at work and random thought to do something unethical at work. I pointed it for a second because I knew I wouldn't get caught. But a few seconds I said no and rebuked that thought away. I was It was recognized it was ungodly thought and it was out of nowhere. I rebuked it in the name of Jesus and didn't agree with it. 
in my spirit. Had I agreed with it, I probably would be lost doing unethical things at work and open the door to more demons in my life. That open door brings more than one demon and one suggestion would lead to demonic entrance and spiritual attachments. Listen to that because that's very powerful. What you listen to is a way for demons to enter. Music is another way. Music is one of the most powerful medium. Notice medium, media. Why do y'all think this generation is, is just the kids? They're listening to that violence. Kill, kill, hate, hate. Y'all don't know this is happening? They hate, they kill, they angry. They can't handle nothing. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. It's the same thing with us. Whatever you listen to, that's what you, that's what you become. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Whatever you meditate on, that's who you are. All right, so I noticed that music does influence and has demonic attachments and spiritual influence. I used to listen to secular music, mainly hip-hop, dance, pop music, and Spanish music. All the music has sexual messages. I was very lustful and didn't know why. It's when I stopped listening to the music and I started getting closer to God, then I would hear a song playing in my mind while I slept for hours after hearing it. It was creepy. That's what happens when you listen, when you're open. Like, okay, if you are really trying to get closer to God, then your spirit is open. But guess what? It could be a two-edged sword. Because what you listen to, if you start listening to demonic stuff, then that will enter in too. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So you have to be careful and mindful. She said, but when I stopped listening to it, I got, okay, I didn't know about the spiritual aspect of music, so I would listen to it off and on. I decided one day to stop, and I noticed that I had sexual dreams when I would listen to music, you know, and, I, and that's what I was saying on the first live I did, too. One day, I was with my um, assistant, and, you know, she was younger, so I didn't want to act like I, you know, I tried to be mindful. Everybody's not where I'm at, and I'm not trying to be arrogant or anything. Everybody's processing different. We're all at different stages, so you have to be mindful. So I said, go ahead, play your R&B music. Honey, I ain't never, ever doing that again. That night I had a sexual dream, and then it was somebody I don't even like. Me, me and the God don't even like each other. And I said, God, where did that come from? He said, because of that that music, it, it, it entered in. And then it formed. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm saying something. It'll enter in, and then it starts forming suggestions or enticement or seducing. And that's what I saw in that spirit with Matthew Stevens, Dr. Matthew Stevenson on that stage or whatever that was going on. It was a seducing spirit. And seducing, it, it lusts. Come on, somebody. It'll bring lust into your spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. So then she said, when I stopped, I noticed that I had more peace in my spirit because I didn't have that in my spirit. She said, now I have a calmness, and I prefer calmness to the mental and spiritual clutter that was going on. Praise God. Okay, so I'm going to read another one. I mean, I'm so proud of them. I'm not going to say their names. I wish I could, but, you know, unethical. I don't want to do that, but it was, I'm so proud of them. Y'all just don't know. So this is the second student. She says, my homework assignment was to summarize the ways in which evil entities can enter us. We have eight ways in which evil can enter in. The first is our mind. That is what we pray in which keep the mind of Christ and to renew our minds daily. The second is through our skin. And that's true. That's why they try to give you perfumes. You know, the so perf some perfumes make you feel like you're sexy or whatever. I don't know. Y'all know what I'm saying. When something touches us or even contact, let me tell y'all what happened. This is really, this is really what happened. Oh my God, this is weird. Years ago, I used to work at a, um, a preschool, and I got to um, tell y'all this. I got to show you, actually. And this little boy, he was a little boy, two or three years old, and he come to me, and I got to show y'all what he did. He did like this. And the way he did it, I hit his hand. I said, get out of here. It felt sexual. So I, I told the uh, other, the director, and then they, we talked to his mother. What had happened is he was sneaking in while they were looking at pornos. I just said something. I just said something. By a touch, you can you can get spirits by a touch. So you have to be careful. Y'all sitting up there, and that's why I don't agree. I don't mean any harm, you guys. I really love you guys. But I don't agree when you're at a church and they say, hug your neighbor. I'm, if I'm, it's a demon, I'm not hugging you. I'm going to look at you like you're crazy. You better not hug me. Yeah, you gotta you gotta have wisdom because the enemy he's slick oh he's slick you guys he's slick he, he he's coming in this way and he's coming in that way y'all better listen hallelujah hallelujah all right so let me continue 
When something touches you or someone, we come in contact with it knowingly or unknowingly. The third is the eye gate. Therefore, we must guard what we see and to always pray because we can see something that remain in our vision and always we try to blink it away. The fourth is our, our ear gate. We must be prayerful when listening to things that are not positive and demonic. The fifth is our mouth gate and we know that life is in and death is in the power of the tongue, so we must always be prayerful before we speak. The sixth entrance is our nose because we can breathe in and smell things that are demonic. That's true. Sometimes um, when a demon is present, and I'm very serious, it, and I'm not trying to be derogatory, you guys, it smells like a um, like somebody has gas. It is real stench. All right. The seventh and eighth are sexual organs. Um, and you know, the body parts, the front and the back, okay? These two are equally important because it ties many to lustful spirits, and those are what she said, and acts of disobedience. Let me tell you something, especially husband, wives, or even boyfriends and girlfriends. Have you ever been with somebody and you know you don't like their little ugly ways, but then you start acting like them? And you be like, wait a minute, I don't... That's because y'all have intertwined. Did you know that even kissing, saliva, right? Y'all kissing. Don't you know you're exchanging spirits with that person? We didn't know all that, especially in the 80s and 90s. The 80s, everybody was making babies, so y'all know what time it was. Let's be real. We did not know, but now we're starting to come into the spiritual enlightenment of what's been happening for generations that we didn't know or we weren't aware of. Because I, I ain't going to say we didn't know because you could feel something, but we didn't know what it was. We didn't go into depth the way God is allowing us to go into depth now and saying, y'all got to deal with that. Because if not, that's going to deal with y'all. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. All right. So these are eight points of interest and that also interact with our five senses of touch, smell, taste, sight, and hearing. Thank you so much. All right. Also, this is the third students. Now we have a, um, we're in a book called Pigs in the Parlor. Oh God, that is a, y'all want that book? I'm telling you, it talks about healing and deliverance. It will, it will save your life. That book is powerful. I don't care what nobody say. In chapter five of Pigs in the Parlor, the author Frank and Ida May Hammond gives clear illustration of how demons enter in life through sin. Sin gives the devil legal authority to enter into your life. It's important that we as believers stay in the presence of God. That is so powerful, you guys. We must. I'm not saying, you know, I know we're not perfect. You want to have some kind of enjoyment. I get that. But just let it be positive. You don't have to have nastiness or perverseness to be enjoyable. I'm just saying. This requires having a consistent prayer life. You have to pray every day. You have to pray. Some of you, I know you got to go to your job. I know you got to do this and do that. Get that money, pay bills, right? But when you get up in the morning, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, I have food. Thank you, I have a house. Cold, I Some people are homeless. And not even that. Some people didn't wake up this morning. Some people woke up to screams. Oh, they did, they did, they did. This stuff is real. So when you wake up, thank God. What am I saying? Be thankful. You know, my dad uh, is a Marine. And so I've had to take him to the VA in California, Atlanta. When I went up in there, I had never been up in there. You see people with half a face, half a brain, no legs, um, no arms. I mean, the stuff you see, it will make you appreciate life. That's all I'm saying. Be thankful. It could be worse. I, I know sometimes we don't have what we need and we go through some hard times, especially if you're a Christian. But you got to be thankful and be mindful. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just saying. I just threw that in there. Thank you, Jesus. Because we ought to be thankful. So let me continue. Um, having a consistent prayer life. Routine reading of the Bible and fasting. You won't last if you don't fast. Oh, today's the 16th day of the um, Daniel fast. And then I'm going to keep going because the conference is next month. You guys really need to come to that conference. I'm not one that just trying to get money. Y'all, y'all come. So get, no, no, no. Those conferences. And that's why I don't give them. But so often notice I don't because it drains me. People are healed and delivered. The Atlanta conference. And I'm not just trying to sell a conference. There was this lady. And um, all this is real stories. No exaggeration. I, I get so high in the spirit, I don't know what I'd be doing, you know. And I just told her to come here and I tapped her on her back. And she, she was she was like kinda like oh like leaned over, deformed, you know, pretty much, and she had a walker. Honey, that woman the next month was cutting her grass, walking, walking <laughs> having more energy than me. I'm I'm looking. She got healed. That's God. That's not Deanna. I'm just a servant. So I'm just saying, if you truly want to be healed, delivered, set free, it's going to be in that place because of God. We're just servants. And everybody that God chose is powerful. 
in their own right. We're all going to bring something powerful. I'm just being real. So, hallelujah. All right. So, let us continue. It says, your relationship with God is the most important precious gift as a believer and can have it's not to be taken lightly you guys that is real i don't care what relationship you have on this earth husband wife daughters child whatever the case may be grandbabies nothing should exceed your relationship with god and that's what's happening the enemy is removing people from god with work with this, with that, trying to replace something else that feels good, right? All right, let's continue. The Bible clearly talks about sin and the consequences of the sin in the book of Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ of our Lord. The death the Bible speaks about is not always immediate, but a slow death. A death that spreads like a disease, not only to the individual, but as stated in chapter 5, we inherit demons that pass down generational curses. These are generational curses that's passed down through the family. It's important for parents to understand their role in their child children's life. The Bible tells us that the children pay for the sins of the father from the third to the fourth generation, Deuteronomy 5, 8 to 10. However, as a believer, you have the ability to break the curse through the blood of Jesus. We are held accountable for what we do, but the choices we make can affect our bloodline. That's very powerful. The word tells us as long as you're in the flesh, you will sin in the book of Matthew 7, 13 to 14, King James Version, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead into life and few there will find it. The verse is straightforward and powerful. Straight is the gate, meaning there is there are not choices either you're living for god or you're living or you're not we must look like it talk like it walk like our father in heaven you can tell she's in my class why right? she says that the father gives specific instructions to the believer to live a holy filled life this doesn't mean that we are so heavily bound into we're no earthly good, but now we live in a state of awareness. God loves us all. The word states authority. He calls the believer to walk in agape love. It's our role and mission to witness and minister the gospel. We all play a significant role and serve a great purpose. To summarize the chapter, the wages of sin is death. This is the fate of those individuals that choose to live according to the words that to the world standards, excuse me. Call God calls us people to walk in high standards in the earth we are covered by the blood of jesus to carry out his will in the earth he has blessed us with grace and mercy thank you lord that covers our sin this doesn't give us the right to continue in our sin but the opportunity to turn away from sin and live upright before him as believers we have spiritual legal authority to change things in the earth elohim has called us to be world changers the bible never said this walk would be easy but there are several promises dedicated to the righteous we must hold to the promises of god and know that he is a man that cannot lie if he said it it must come to pass and this is student number three i am so proud of them you guys that's why i'm reading it and not only that the information is very powerful to you as well so praise god hold on let me read i think i got two more here and not only that this is encouraging to them as well because even when you with any kind of class you take you want to make sure that you're getting something out of it praise god hallelujah okay so this is student four how demons enter behold i give the power of treading upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall overtake you luke 10 19 this is the position christ gave us to overtake the enemy too often we become timid when dealing with the enemy and his demons oh my god that is the truth y'all know it's true check it at the door Whatever it is, check it at the door. Point blank in the story. I don't care. So often, we don't even realize that we have encountered or been seduced by a demon spirit. You go ahead, girl. Demons can enter through open doors. One open door can enter through is sin. We as believers don't repent or acknowledge sin in our lives. The enemy has free reign to dwell. James 4, 7 tells us to resist the devil and he will flee. We have to combat sin in our lives through repentance and the word of god the second way demons enter is through life circumstances often the enemy takes advantage of our downfalls downfalls are life issues that's exactly what happens i have to expound on this um you're going through you get frustrated you'll start drinking smoking sexing texting y'all know look i just need some reliefs honey that is when you got to get closer to god god keep me God, keep me in your will. Keep my mind. Keep my soul. Keep my spirit. Because here's the deal. When you're hurting, you want to release. You, you want somebody, something to make you feel better. Sometimes when you go through that, that'll be your, your greatest growth. Can I tell y'all something? And, and this is just real. I'm not trying to throw nobody under a bus. Y'all don't know what happened. Um, but I'm asking God, can I say something? I can't tell the whole story. 
but somebody had poured into me and put it this way somebody had promised to do something and they did have but then they pulled back and it was very hurtful and it was about a, my restaurant just to be honest with you and I couldn't understand I said God why'd you even allow that and I was hurt I did cry I was like was she playing the game I mean I just didn't understand it I don't think nobody around me did because you know she, they poured a lot and then all of a sudden I was like okay and I was just so hurt and God said Deanna you can grow through it or you, or you can allow it to take you under so that's when I made the spices I was in the kitchen one day and I was some tawny sashes or something I said well this is so salty and God said and I said God he said you remember when you asked me to make a product because you're a chef that's how the spices was made through going through that ordeal I was in the kitchen and I like to cook when I get upset or whatever that's how the spices was made what am I saying it is in your greatest trials and tests that God will open you up and you'll be strong and you say you know what there's not with tears in your eyes with your body hurting with you not understanding with nobody around and you, you'll be like God 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 just keep me and through that God will give you your greatest idea a, a spiritual strength a, a financial breakthrough uh, a plan y'all don't hear me Y'all don't hear me up in here. It's when you're going through that you're at your greatest to receive the spirit of God, the knowledge of God, the direction of God, the healing of God, the presence of God. No, it don't feel good. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. It'll make you question everything and everybody. But that is when you're supposed to trust you, God. No, I don't understand it. Yes, it is unfair. It hurts. I don't like it. I want to get mad. But I trust you. I'm not going to say bad things. I'm not going to do bad things. I'm not going to speak against them. I trust you. And that's hard. Because when we get hurt emotionally or any type of way, we want to. And don't act like y'all don't know it. This is the truth. This is the truth. This is the truth. We want to get up on here. Let me tell you. And some of y'all do. Okay, so you get gratification. And, and everybody going to like it because they like drama. Drama and sex sales. Y'all know that's the truth. But why not just and let God fight for you? Because he says, vengeance is mine. So when you do it, guess what? You didn't got your reward. And now you're finna get back like says God didn't tell you to do that. But God says, vengeance is mine. God says, pray for your enemies. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me continue. I only got two more papers, you guys. She says, um, so J James 4, 7 tells us to resist the devil. He will flee. We have to combat sin in our lives to repentance, the word of God. Okay. The second way demons enter is through life circumstances. Often the enemy takes advantage of our downfalls or life issues. Proverbs 4.23 tells us to guard our hearts with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. And that's what happens when people get hurt. You do, you do and you say things that you probably shouldn't say. Because here's the deal. This is very powerful. Hurting people hurt people. Point blank. Point blank. So I think when you're hurting yeah, it hurts. Talk to God. Cry about it. Don't get on the phone. Don't get on Facebook. Don't gossip. Because now you're out of order. And you might be right. They might be dead wrong. But it's not what you go through. It's how you go through it, people of God. Because we, we, we want to quote Jesus. We don't want to live like Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me continue. We have to remember that we fight a real enemy. Staying girded with the word of God, life issues will happen to all of us, especially when you are called to the purpose of God. Another way demons enter is through the rise of inheritance. In other words, things are passed down from generation to generation. Galatians says 3.13, tell us Christ became a curse for us. So we have authority to break every cycle the enemy has imposed upon you through lineage or family strongholds. When we exercise authority and dominion over the earth, we become more confident in battling demon spirits. Praise God. This is student number four. I'm so proud of y'all. Oh, Lord. So my teaching is not in vain. Point blank in the story. I know the enemy be coming, but that's all right. Hallelujah. Oh, I like that. I like that. Praise God. Um, Carla Simon or Simon says, I sing my own songs. Too much contempt. That's real. Especially in the gospel field today. I'm not trying to be funny because the first thing you, when people, when you say something and I'm a gospel singer, oh, you hating. Okay, whatever. I just know what I feel. Like my grandfather and my grandmother used to say, if it hit your feet before it hit your heart, that ain't gospel. And right now, everybody want to shake and do a dance video and, and be sexy. 
That's not holiness. It is. Thank you, Lord. I hear you. It, you have to ask yourself one question when you listen to anything or anybody. I don't care if it's me. Are we glorifying God? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't care about yourself. I don't care about me. Because, because the next self-worship. And a lot of people do that. Put up them hearts now. Share this video. I don't never ask y'all to do that. Because it's, I don't want to get sidetracked by that. I don't care if y'all give no hearts. I don't care. I'm trying to deliver a message from God. Period. Glorify God, not me. No, don't, you're going to get us both in trouble. Hallelujah. So is it glorifying God? Always ask yourself that. I don't care who it is. All right, so the fifth student, she says, um, okay, I told them to write an essay on how demons enter. Our bodies are the temple of God's spirit, Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. And because of this fact, the enemy is on a rampage to destroy the gifts of the body of Christ. His ultimate plan is to blind the individual of their eternity. Ooh, I love that. Eternal um, gifts. God given inheritance through death, burial, and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The enemy unleashes demons to enter into the individual through a variety of strategies, some of which appear harmless and some of more overt. A couple of harmless entries are through association of so-called friends. These individuals can influence God's vessel to conform to the pattern of the world causing the light to dim within and ultimately bringing the person over to a lifestyle of darkness and perversion. A second entry point is considered harmless is through demonic traditions. Many individuals practice Satan satanic holidays unknowingly, or if they do know, they refuse to admit it's satanic and continue the practice. An example is Halloween. There's absolute, absolutely nothing holy about it, yet demons enter through a person's desire to be festive and have fun promoting wickedness the enemy has also strategies to enter a person's vessel there are drug addictions pornography adultery and gluttony all of aforementioned should be avoided and if an individual is involved in any of these activities they should immediately seek god for totally deliverance as children of god we must watch and pray that we enter not into temptation the spirit is indeed willing but the flesh is weak matthew 6 26 41 our flesh is the playground for demonic activity good job and it's a preferred, preferred location for the enemy to wreak havoc in our lives. Children of God, we must ensure and perpetual abide in the will of God and obey that we will not fall. And that's 2 Peter 1.10, she writes. We must not give place to the de devil, Ephesians 4.27, and remain steadfast, unmovable, always embodying in the work of the Lord, for our work is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15.58, do not allow the wiles of the devil to hinder you from attaining your eternal crown. We have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the power of his testimony. Revelations 12, 11. All right, praise God. Okay, good job. That was the fifth student. Now this is the last paper. One of the many ways demons enter. Demons. Okay, actually that was it. I made two of the same one. So that was the five top ones that I actually picked out. And that was on how demons. I'm so proud of you guys. You know, this is what, this is what. I didn't start the classes for money. I, mean, I know people be thinking everything, you know, maybe for some people. God had mandated me, what, in 2014? And I didn't want to. I was like, God, you asking me to teach babes in Christ, the prophetic? You know how hard that is? They come against you. Some of them get so grown, they think they are you. Some of them try to challenge you. Some of them come against you. Y'all don't know what I've been through. One of them, in 2015, I forgive her. She put something in my shampoo. I lost all my hair. But let me tell you how God worked. That was in 2015. A month ago, she got in touch with me. Notice I say that was in 2015. A month ago, she got in touch with me. She apologized. And I, I, I receive it. I'm not going to get mad. I mean, my hair grew back, right? But I'm just saying, it's been a lot. And, you know, I realize it's not about me. It's about God. That's what this is all about. If, if it ever becomes about you, then you're out of order. It's about God. And, and I think that's what the enemy is doing. He's trying to make everybody make these mini kingdoms. Everybody want to brand themselves. Everybody want to be the, the next best thing. And everybody want to be the favorite apostle, prophet, the top prophet, the top preacher, the top teacher. We're supposed to be like a fist. All working together. Ain't no long rangers. And that's why we're in trouble. Hallelujah. And then the ones that are doing the right thing, people get mad when we point out the ones that's doing the wrong thing. We're supposed to. We're mandated by God. Hallelujah. 
It don't matter who it is. Hallelujah. So I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Stop letting, stop touching the unclean thing. And when you do, just repent. I've been there. I've been there. Just repent. God, look, I'm weak. I, I, if you on drugs, alcohol, sex, sex is an addiction. Y'all can say what you want. That's why pornos. That's why these pedophiles. That stuff must be cast out and severed to the root of that thing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray a prayer right now. Everybody that's in the sound of my voice, I'm not playing with the, these demons. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I know that I am not perfect. But Father God, use me as a vessel unto honor to you, God. Father God, I pray for everybody that has an addiction, that has a, a sin of perverseness, lust, whatever the sin is, Father God. Father God, I know that you are a healer and deliverer. Hallelujah, for you did it for me. Hallelujah. And you continue to do it for all of us. So, Father God, I speak to their spirit. Some of them are tired. Some of them don't know how to come out of that sin, God. But, Father God, send a word. You ain't even got to go. Just send a word, God. So, Father God, I just pray that they are healed and delivered. And I sever that spirit right now, that spirit of anger, rage, murders, perverseness, lust witchcraft hallelujah hexes vexes spells everything that is not of you god i sever it to the root of that thing by the spirit in the spirit of god hallelujah with holy ghost fire feathers in the name of jesus and i cast it out right now to the abyss the darkest part cautious oh hallelujah in the name of jesus christ of nazareth deliver your people heal your people oh father god love your people back to life hallelujah where they're hurting oh father god where they've been misused abused father god in their mind their soul their spirit their body god hallelujah you are the great i am you are the healer you are jehovah rapha jehovah makeda jehovah shalom send peace god peace whether there's mayhem whether there's fear whether there's um, torment god because that's what sin does it torments you oh father god release release your people like never before in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i still believe the power of god is real the power of god is real the power of god is real hallelujah to his name your power is real god we give you honor and we give you praise. We say that this prayer will not be hindered, stopped, or blocked, but will accomplish what it was sent out to do in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. I plead the blood of Jesus over their mind, their soul, and their body. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah to his name. I plead the blood of Jesus like never before. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God is real. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. God is real, God is real, God is real. It's not for a show, it's not for entertainment. God said, come out, come out of her. God said, that's not the unclean thing. He said, I will redeem you. I will free you. I am your God. I love you with the everlasting love, God says. But he says, be obedient. Walk in obedience. Trust me. Thank, thank you, God. I hear you say, trust me. Some of you don't trust me. Say, trust me. Trust me. I know it's been hard. Trust me. I, I know they did you that. Trust me. Stop being, walk in forgiveness. I hear you, God. Walk in forgiveness. Walk in forgiveness. Walk in forgiveness, people. Walk in forgiveness. You got to forgive people. You got to forgive people. I know it hurts. I know it hurts, but you got to forgive people. It's going to be all right. Yeah, he never said it was going to be easy. There's nothing he's, besides will be with you. Low always, even into death. Hallelujah. Woo, I didn't know I was going to be doing all this this morning, but praise God. God is good. He, he loves us. He loves you. He loves you, people. He loves you. And who he loves, he chastises and corrects and rebukes. I can tell you about that one. So God bless you. God keep you. Stay strong in this hour. We don't have a choice. Because if not, you're going to get God. Them demons are real. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All right, you guys. God bless you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon again. Great job, prophetic class. God bless you. I will see you tonight, Lord Spare. Um, just stay strong. Y'all know what time it is. Rule our soldiers for that is who we are. God bless.